Loads about Sir Jim Ratcliffe. We'll talk about him much more later on in the papers. Uh, we'll get accused of being the Man United show, as we always are on this on this hour. But because they're always on the back pages, what can we do about Listen, that? Listen, this is a huge story. Oh, it's massive. And, and is, is this a big address with the media has thrown up a lot of interest in conversations, hasn't it? Yes. Oh, very much so. And uh, a lot of the things he said, I, I was quite uh, enthused by, to be honest. I think a lot of United fans will be, but... You know, the proof is in the pudding. And I think the problem for United over the last 10 years, I'm not saying they've heard anything from the owners really over, the, over that time period, but there's been a few false dawns about, you know, changes of CEOs or a few different, you know, sport uh, directors of football, that sort of thing coming in and, and big transfers. And, and a lot of them have threatened to be, you know, kick United onto the next level, but really has not happened. And in fact, the club's sort of gone backwards, if not commercially, certainly on the field in that time. But... Um, Aside from a few things that we'll get to a little bit later on, mm -hmm. what did you make of overall of his presentation and his interviews yesterday? It's good. I think it's really good. I think it's strong. Uh, he addressed all of the things that we may have been speaking about. Uh, Dan Ashworth, which is the current... Um, kind of news headline that we've been focusing on will he come from Newcastle uh, to work on the sporting side of things that 20 million compensation to buy out he said is a bit silly uh, on that reported number it's interesting isn't it where the media reports on something and then the actual guy comes out it's like where have you pulled that number from because mm. 20 million is so excessive for that role like uh, I, and then the garden and leave that would come along with it about a year and a half what you know, if you want to get things done quickly. So it's, that that was interesting to hear him speak on that. Um, he'd spoken about the youngsters who have done brilliant since Christmas. Kobe Menu, uh, of course, been one of them. Garnacho, Rasmus Hoyland. Uh, remember that picture of them sitting on the hoarding Great with picture. their arms around each other? That's like a perfect future-looking Manchester United. Um, on the rivals, everybody loves to hear when Alex Ferguson's quotes are brought up again yeah. about knocking you know our noisy neighbours off their perch he has said that and he said he's got a lot to learn from Manchester City and you do you know yeah. you do you got to look how that club has been okay let's not talk about you know the 115 charges etc but how they are being run and how they look from the outside um, and how they're winning is something to be admired the one sticking point for me is Mason Greenwood and actually, he's all over the back pages because there's the discussion of whether he will return to the club. So when you read it on the back page, it's almost as if you think Sir Jim Ratcliffe has suggested, oh, and I would look at bringing Mason Greenwood back. But actually, when you read the quotes, it's not quite what he said at all. No. Um, shall it, I read those quotes? Yeah, feel, uh, yeah, you absolutely can do, yeah, for sure. Um, he said, asked if he had a future at the club, Ratcliffe said, I don't know. All I can do is talk about the principle of how we will approach decisions like that. Is he the right type of footballer? Is he a good person or not? It's quite clear. We have to make a decision. He's on loan. Obviously, he's not the only one. But we've got one or two footballers that we have to deal with and we have to make the decision on. The process will be understand the facts, not the hype, and then try come to a fair decision on the basis of values, which is basically, is he a good guy or not? Now, surely Sir Jim Ratcliffe's been entitled to a little bit of audio in his time. Mm. And I think it'll be hard to unhear that audio if he's heard it and not to judge completely on Mason Greenwood he's got his new opportunity in football he's cracking on with his life okay he hasn't he hasn't been charged the charges were dropped they were dropped against him but that audio was damning and it doesn't scream good guy to me it screams bad guy to me so therefore I hope he will not be back at the club I think that would be a poor move if Sir Jim Ratcliffe does that. And I think that uh, the cultural thing is very important with United, isn't it? That they that they set the right culture of the, the Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his regime in terms of, you know, only having people who are who will fit in within that a positive, encouraging, and forward-thinking environment, and not players who are going to be potentially liabilities off the field. He's very um, also open to positive conversation positive methods of coaching and that's something that we don't really see from Eric Ten Hag. However things are starting to turn a little bit on the pitch. You know they're also in the back pages today Luke Shaw now out for another couple of months with a hamstring injury. Defensively things are a bit shaky um, but there have been improvements with the youngsters so perhaps now he has struck a chord with them to get them on side and you are seeing more positive style and more positive football. Yeah. I'd stick by Ten Hag now, you know. You know, he, ha he was asked about that. He didn't go into his future of Ten Hag at the club. 
but it seems like there's a lot more credit in the bank now because of the last few weeks in the Prem. I don't disagree with that. I think, and the fact is, he's made it a two or three year plan to, to, to reach the top again. He also said, we're still debating what precisely is the style of football we want to play. Mm. That basically determines Ten Hag's future. Because mm-hmm. if Ten Hag doesn't play the style that they end up wanting, then that's, that's going to be the end of him no matter what, isn't it? And particularly if mm-hmm. results don't come pretty quickly. And I don't mean now between now and the end of the season, but certainly beyond that. Mm. then there's two things they can do about it. There's one, they can say, this is the style of football we want and results aren't quite coming, but we'll get there. Or they can say, this is not the style of football we want and ultimately somebody else needs to come in and implement it. Yeah, also Gary Neville coming in to to help oversee things. and be part. I think it's important to have those former players who are still hugely regarded in the media, whether you like him or not. You know, he understands the club, he's been through the highs and he's seen all the lows. That I think it's important to have these guys on site and to offer the thoughts of former players and former pros and, and making it get back to the good old glory days. It's been 11 long years, hasn't it? I mean, the fall from grace has been remarkable, really. Um, and it does feel like now Sir Jim is bringing some hope and we're hearing the things that we want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, United fans should be positive about it. But as I say, you know, they have been burned a few times over the last few years. So uh, time will tell.